Hi, this is Darshan Sensor and welcome back to another video on derivatives. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the chain rule. Chain rule is just another way of taking derivatives, but it's also a pretty important rule. So it's really important you pay attention to this video and I hope it's helpful. So let's begin. So we'll consider the following function, right? f of x equals tangent of 3x squared minus 1. So right off the bat, we know that there's something different about that function, something that we can't makes it something we can't quite take the derivative of right away. So to understand what that is, let's compare it to something we know, something we're more familiar with. That would be f of x equals tangent of x, right? So that one we can take a, take a derivative of in a jiffy, because that's on our, <clears throat> on our table, and we know how to take the derivative of that, right? But what's, what that makes this different from that? I mean, they're both tangent. The difference is that three x instead of just an x, you have a 3x squared minus 1. You have that extra, you have another function of x in there another function of x right we have another function of x embedded in there so that still poses a little bit of problem right because it means we can't quite take a derivative using what methods we've had so far oh we're getting what's called the chain rule a chain rule helps us solve these kinds of problems the chain rule takes into account these additional functions of x and it makes these problems solvable for us so that's what we'll be exploring in this video and i hope I hope it's helpful for you. So in any case, let's move on. So let's talk about composite functions. So composite functions contain multiple functions of x, multiple functions of x embedded into each other, right? So for example, consider the function y equals six sine of x, sine of natural log of x squared, right? So that is of the form f of g of h of k of x. In other words, instead of just plugging x into f of x, you're plugging g of h of k of x into that. So it's basically like plugging 3x into your function instead of x, right? So that's the idea. So a quick exercise here. In this uh, example, in this function here, what do f of x, g of x, h of x and k of x represent. Take a minute and just go ahead and figure that out. Pause the video and try to see if you can figure out what each of those functions represent. All right, let's go ahead and work through these now. So f of x, let's take well, let's talk about what f of x might be. So f of x here is clearly the outermost function, right? It's the function that we're plugging everything else into. So take a look at this. What function are we plugging everything else into? Well, what's the outermost thing you see it would be the six right the six is the outermost thing everything everything on the inside is sort of be is so you're taking everything after everything you take you plug in an x you square it take the natural log of it and then take the sign of that you're in the end you're multiplying it by six right so that means that would be the outermost function so therefore f of x would be six x right now what about g of x g of x is the second most inner function, right, the second most outer function. So it's just before the 6, but it's still uh, on relatively on the outside. So that would be the sine of x, right, because it comes next. The sine of x is sort of taking, is sort of what's on the outside of everything else. So therefore, g of x would equal the sine of x. Okay. Now, what about h of x? Again, we just take another step inside, and we see that that would be the natural log of x. So, therefore, h of x would just be the natural log of x, ln of x. And last but not least, what would our innermost function be? Well, that would just be k of x, right? Because that would uh, our innermost function, or k of x, that would be x squared, right? Because that's the that's just the innermost function there. So, therefore, k of x would equal x squared. All right, so now let's just take a look at what's really happening here. So in the composite function, what we're basically doing is we're plugging x squared into ln of x, we're plugging ln of x into sine of x, and then we're plugging the sine of x into x squared. So we're plugging this into this, then this whole thing, I should say, yeah, this whole thing goes into that, and then this whole thing 
goes into that. So I'm not doing a good job of representing that, but that's the idea. So you're plugging fun different functions into other functions, and then you're pl and th yeah, that's basically the idea. You're plugging different functions into other functions of x, right? So that's the idea behind composite functions, and this is what the chain rule helps us solve. A handy uh, analogy to consider is the analogy of a present. So when you have a present, the first thing you do is you take off the wrapping paper, right? then or you take off the ribbon and then you take off the wrapping paper then you open your box and then you get your present right similarly you have a function on the outside and then there's another function on the inside and then there's another function inside that and then you reach your your final x or your final innermost function so that's just another way to look at it so now let's officially look at the chain rule right so the chain rule is defined as follows so for the derivative of f of g of x, and I mean, you can have as many functions in here as you want, as you'll see. So derivative of f of g of x is the derivative of d dx of f of g of x times d dx of g of x okay so that's how you would write that another another way you could actually write this out which is uh, in my opinion just a little bit easier is f prime of g of x times g prime of x that's just an easier way to write it out it's plus it's, it's a lot easier to type so that's how you that's another way you can do that out so this is basically the chain rule all right so let's talk about what this sort of means in English. so in english what's the, what this means is that you take the derivative of each composite function right so you've got you take the derivative of f of x and then you eventually take the derivative of g of x so and you keep going for as many composite functions as you have so if you've got more than one if you had like f of g of h of x then you take the derivative of f of g f of g of h then f of, then g of h and then h right so that's how you'd work and you'd work your you'd work your way from the outside in so you start at your outermost function so if you have something like this something like this you'd start from the outside with your f of x then you move into the g and then you move into the h right that's how you'd actually you do that you work your way from the outside in and then the most one of the more important things is that when when deriving the outer functions you use the inner functions as you would use x all right so in other words what this means is that when you take the derivative of this outermost thing right here so the derivative of f you don't just take the derivative of f of x you take the derivative of f of g of x so for example if f of x were equal to tangent of x right f prime of g of x would equal 1 over 1 plus not x squared but g of x squared right so you have to keep that in mind and then you take the derivative of g of x so that's basically what you're doing here you got to keep that function in as long as you have an inner function over there so that's just important to keep in mind all right last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at one example and this is the something we saw at the beginning of the video so we're going to just sort of dissect this and see how we'd work this out all right so let's take a look at that so firstly let's consider what our functions are so our inner our outermost function is tangent of x right and our inner function is 3x squared minus 1 okay so our first step would be to so f prime of x therefore would be the derivative of the outer function okay the derivative of that but with this in it okay so this would be 1 over 1 plus 3x squared minus 1 times 6, the derivative of this thing, which would be 6x. And then just tidying that up would equal 6x over 1 plus 3x squared minus 1 and squared squared right 
there is no way to simplify that and I think that then that would be your final answer and again consider the idea behind this all right so you've got you've got your outermost function okay and then you're taking the derivative of that but don't forget you've got to plug in that you've got to keep this function inside it because you're you got to take that into account and then you just tag on the derivative of that second function in, okay so our for our outermost function or our first our f of x here was tangent of x so we took the derivative of tangent of x but instead of x we plug in 3x squared minus 1 and then we just tagged on the der derivative of 3x squared minus 1 at the end all right so uh, that will conclude it for this video i wanted to make i just didn't want to add more examples for the sake of time however i will have another short example video coming up right after this so make sure you check that out it'll help solidify the concepts into your head so in any case that will be it for this video thank you so much for watching please do consider subscribing or liking or sharing this video if you found it helpful and that'll be it